Hi guys, I'm Will Craft Hamster and I thought I'd do another episode today on carving our applewood bowl. Um, and what I want to focus on today is working on the handles. Now I've marked these out just before I started filming, um, hopefully they're picking up alright on the camera there. And I've just used a really basic template just to give me a couple of nice little curving sweeps. Um, I've actually made a start on this side here already just so you can see kind of what I'm going for. Um, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to move the camera just a little bit closer in, in a second um, and I will show you exactly how it is we're going to do this. Right then guys, so here we are, um, and this is probably going to be the most fiddly part of this carving. Um, and what I've done, and this is just my technique for doing this, I've actually put a stop cut in here, there was one on the other side, and I've also put one on either side down here as well. Um, and the reason for that is it just gives you a little bit more control when you're trying to remove this material, um, and it also gives you a little bit of a buffer. You can see the cut that's come in here, um, let's grab my knife. So I've left a little bit of excess here because we're going to have to smooth this round as well. Um, and the reason I've done that is when we're coming down to remove this material, um, this little extra piece at the bottom is just going to provide a bit of a buffer for my knife to sort of hit into um, that I'm going to be carving away anyway. So it doesn't make a difference whether I do any damage. Now there's a couple of ways you can do this. You can either kind of hold it down here somewhere, put your thumb inside the bowl so it's nice and protective, and just use kind of a, a potato peeling style grip just to take away that material which is a nice safe easy way of doing it alternatively you can flip it around this side and as long as you use sort of the the, the end of your knife rather than sort of the, the, the belly um, the reason for that, if I try using the belly and start coming down like this, there's a good chance I'm going to hit my hand here, which I'm having to use to hold the piece of wood. Um, so if you use the end of your knife, you can get a lot of control with the back of your thumb, and you can just gently start paring that down. Um, now when I'm doing something like this, what I tend to find I do is a combination, so I can sort of flip over here, take a little bit off, flip it round, and then keeping this hand well out of the way, come back to that potato peeling grip um, and really it's just a, a mixture if you like of personal preference and whatever works for you at the time. Now this piece of wood I say I've been working on it for a little while now so it is starting to dry out which is really good news. Um, the downside of that is obviously the wood, the wood is starting to get a little bit harder. Um, now the the issue with that is that you do need to cut or put a little bit more pressure on and sort of cut a little bit harder um, now that's fine, it's not a problem, and again the, the methods that we're using here are relatively safe, um, so you know there's not too much risk of the knife slipping off and coming into your hand or your fingers, but you do need to take care as you do when you're using any kind of sort of carving, doing any sort of knife work. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to carry on probably about five minutes or so on this piece. I'll flip over and I'll move on to the two pieces up here and I'll come back once we've, uh, we've got the handles ready for the next stage. Right then guys, well that's the difficult part out of the way and as you can see I've now got um, the makings of the handles. Um, this one up here is slightly larger than this one just because it was longer before I started. Um, and the bit I want to show you now is this part here. Um, so as you can see there's sort of a, a bit of a lumpy knobbly bit. Um, hopefully you can see on the camera there there's a lot of little marks in there where the knife has come down and stopped in this little bit of excess which is exactly what I planned um, in comparison to this one which I've already smoothed away. Um, and this part is particularly easy so really all you need to do is take your knife, make sure I can get this on camera for you, and you just want to start rounding down up to the point where your handle meets the bowl. And this is a really, really easy, simple process. It takes all of a couple of minutes. And all you're trying to do is just extend this bowl, or the, the curve of this bowl, down into your handle. Uh, now it won't be perfect because we've got a little bit of sanding to do after this as well. But again, because you've already got that line in there, you, you, know, you know where you're following, you just keep to that line And again, all this could be tidied up a little bit just before we go to final sanding, probably in the next episode. So 
So there we go, taken not very long at all. And in comparison to the other side, which I haven't touched yet, you can see we've still got two fairly large knobbly bits on the top here. Um, and again, you can see hopefully sort of here where all of those knife cuts have come down. And as I say, that's, that's deliberate because we want to use that little piece of excess wood just to, uh, to protect the bowl while we're putting these handles in. Now, what I'm probably going to do for the uh, between now and the next episode, I'm just going to generally tidy everything up with my knife. There's no point doing that on camera because it's very much uh, exactly what we've been doing for the last few episodes. Um, but the idea being is I'll tidy up the outside of the bowl. I'll probably have a, another little go over with the smoothing gouge on the inside of the bowl as well. Um, that will just get it all ready and prepared for sanding. Let's see how we're getting on here. So again, just, just in the time that I've been talking, we've kind of pretty much sorted out this side and just this little bit to go. So again, I'll do that on camera while we're while I'm nattering away. Um, but again, you know, once you've got that kind of difficult part of getting the sweep of the handle in, um, this part of it really is just a matter of tidying things up. Um, now you can spend as long or as little time as you like on that. Um, I like to get things at least nice and rounded and even before I move on to sand. You can do all this via sanding if you want to, um, but it does make that process a little bit more laborious, a bit more time consuming. Um, and if you've ever done something like this before, you'll know quite how mind-numbingly boring sanding is. So there we go, guys. Got them all in shot. So in the space of probably 15 minutes worth of work in total between camera shots and things, this is what I've got to. Um, we've now got some fairly nicely shaped handles. I'm gonna mark these out um, between now and the next episode, and I'm just gonna cut them down with a fine tooth saw just so that they're both even. Um, but I think all in all, this is looking pretty good. Right then guys, well I hope it was useful. As I say, I'll do a little bit of tidying up of this between now and the next episode, and I think we'll probably move over to uh, final sanding after that, and then we'll do a little, maybe a little bit of finishing. Um, but anyway guys, um, if you're carving along sort of doing this with me, um, you know, this is where we are now. As I say, the handles are probably the fiddliest bit of the lot, just because you've already carved away a lot of material and you need to sort of move it around a bit to get a good grip. Um, but as I say, you know, maybe one or two episodes more and we should be completely finished and we'll have a nice a nice product for the end of it. Uh, but I hope it was useful. Comments and questions in the box below. Hit like and subscribe if you'd like to see more. And I hope you'll all join me next time. Thanks, guys. Mm -hmm.